Welcome to the Under the Capes podcast. I'm Tim, and I'm on a mission to build my own geek brand. To help, I'm going under the capes of all the best bloggers, cosplayers, podcasters, YouTubers, and other entrepreneurs to learn how they've built a following around doing what they love. How's it going, entrepreneurs? Welcome to episode 31 of the Under the Capes podcast. Um, This is a really cool episode. First off, hopefully everyone saw Black Panther this weekend. Um, I saw it at the the Thursday show, and it was it was so good. Um, Everyone in it really shines. Like there's there's no real weak part. There's there's a few. I mean, there's like half a dozen really standout parts that you know will be people's favorite that that really make the movie which is which is rare i think that like so many different characters make the movie and awesome story and and yeah great great movie i really want to dive into this episode um it's it's a really cool one i talk with matthew young the director of quest of the muscle nerd which is a really cool documentary that goes over the Muscle Nerd competition at Dragon Con 2017. And um, the film follows, the so this is the very first year of the Muscle Nerd competition. The film follows Jerry, the creator, on his dream to have this, this combination of bodybuilding and cosplay competition. First of its kind to really celebrate the people that, um, you know, want to that are passionate about bodybuilding and cosplay and and like that that goal of you know trying to improve their bodies to to improve their cosplays and and better match the characters that they love so it follows the creator of the competition jerry it also follows um the two competitors and it tells their stories and uh, me and matthew talk about how um the f- the film and the the uh, the whole competition really ends up being a backdrop for a really cool story about you know what it means to be a nerd um, and how these three people kind of overcome the personal struggles that come along with being a nerd <laughs> to achieve their personal goals um, you know become something better as they as they strive towards these things and um, it it ends up it ends up being a really cool story uh, the trailer is currently out. Uh, at questofthemusclenerd.com. Definitely recommend checking that out. The full feature-length film is planned to be finished in the fall of this year, 2018. So hopefully we will get further news on when that will be released. And and yeah, this is this is a great talk with Matthew where we go over, you know, the logistics of filming a live competition and filming at DragonCon and um, the process of editing the film, their plans for the 2018 documentary, which they will be starting soon to follow the 2018 Muscle Nerd competition at DragonCon 2018. <laughs> uh, 2018. <laughs> um, and yeah, we go into, you know, what it means to be a nerd and, you know, just the, what this, what this kind of means to the, the nerd culture and the, the cosplay community as a whole. So it's a really fun talk. Um, I think you guys are going to get a lot out of it. Let's dive right in. All right, I'm now joined by Matthew from Quest of the Muscle Nerd. Matthew, thanks for joining me. It is my pleasure, Tim. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, can you tell me a little bit about how you got interested in bodybuilding and cosplay and... (laughs) kind of got involved in the community of muscle nerds? Sure, sure. Uh, Well, it all starts with my friend, uh, Jerry Peacock, who's actually one of the main characters featured in the documentary. Uh, I've known Jerry for over seven years now, and his two biggest passions have always been bodybuilding and cosplay. And at the time when I met Jerry, I wasn't... I, I was a novice in terms of what I understood cosplay to be. Um, so Jerry was sort of my my entrance into that world. And it's it's around that time, if not right before, that I, I had started going to Dragon Con. 
which is you know a huge sci-fi fantasy convention in Atlanta, which is where I live. Um, so I was becoming more and more familiar with the world and uh, getting more friends in that world. And, and I had grown closer to Jerry as a friend over the years. And so uh, last year, Jerry comes to me with this idea that uh, he wanted to take his two passions, bodybuilding and cosplay, and combine them into this one event, the, uh, the Muscle Nerd Competition. Um, and me knowing Jerry and just knowing how unique uh, of an individual he is, I knew that I wanted to uh, chronicle this journey. Um, and so it started with him asking Dragon Con, can I have this competition next year at Dragon Con? Can I host this competition? Uh, and there was a lot of back and forth with the powers that be. And uh, in case you're not familiar, Dragon Con is divided into tracks, and these tracks are basically the different interests. So you have uh, the costuming track, you can have an armory track, there's a puppeting track, there's a gaming track. Um, so first he had to find the right track, and they, and they put him, ended up putting him in costuming, uh, which was a, a good fit. Um, so here is Jerry with this opportunity and a blank slate uh, and he would make the rules from that point on. And so I knew that I wanted to chronicle that f from nothing to something journey. And the logistics of it were, as they said, that he could do uh, just have two people, sort of a test, um, so to speak. So two competitors. They wanted, they'd never done anything like this before, and they just wanted to see how it would go. And so enter... Billy, who is the first competitor, who is a longtime friend of Jerry's, he's this, you know, six foot four massive uh, nerd, and he is a true nerd in every sense of the word. Um, and and then we found Jonathan, who is uh, friends of friends of friends, um, who's this sort of cosplaying veteran, uh, who's competed in bodybuilding before, who has this. He's a bit older than Billy. His muscles are way more mature. Um, you know, he's been putting on costumes and, and getting in front of people for, for years and years. He has this huge personality and he's not afraid of, of being big and fun. Whereas you have Billy, who's this just classic introvert, this, this guy that's terrified of speaking in front of people, let alone standing in front of people wearing next to nothing, flexing his muscles. So it, it was just a classic tale of, you know, like it says in the trailer, if you've seen it, David versus Goliath, this this guy that has all these demons and obstacles against this seemingly insurmountable object, which is Jonathan. All the while, Jerry trying to hold this thing together. <laughs> yeah, it makes for a good mix. That's interesting that Dragon Con was the one that wanted to limit it to two people just for logistical reasons or whatever it was. But... Well, it's... it. I think it comes down to, and they, they so much as, you know, articulated this, it comes down to a fear of the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. So it, within the costuming track, you're large, they're largely used to just, we're, we're just, it's just costumes. It has nothing to do necessarily with your body, even though the body is an, is, is an integral part of your costume. Um, so it was a, a kind of an unknown thing for them. And there was a fear of it turning into, potentially overly sexualized or um, body shaming, uh, which is, is a very sensitive subject, you know, uh, just all these, these sensitive areas that they, they were afraid to kind of risk offending anyone, to be honest, without testing it first, without having a little bit more control over it first. And, you know, they were reluctant to even do the two. And we sort of had to, you know, he had to convince them that, that, this would be okay and and, it, and it's just two people and it's closed and it will be a very positive experience uh, which thankfully it was uh, but yeah i mean it was there's a lot of questions and trepidation around this competition yeah i can see the concern because it it seems like it's almost against the idea that cosplay is for everyone but it's the other end of the spectrum where it's like there is a, a subset that really you know, is interested in bodybuilding and getting their body right for different cosplays. So it kind of, 
it's still for everyone. It, it caters to that specific niche. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, and that was one of the things that Jerry, he, he covers in the documentary is this, is this fine line of, you know, is this, is this body shame or we body shaming by saying that we're proud of, of, of becoming fit, of being fit, of celebrating, uh, the fit lifestyle and, and kind of the big question in the documentary are, are, is, is nerddom and fitness mutually exclusive? Are these two things mutually exclusive and why, 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 why would they need to be mutually exclusive? Why can you not be uh, weird and ripped at the same time? What, you know, and there's plenty of people that are, and you don't want it to turn in Jerry's mind. You don't want it to get this reverse discrimination where you uh, take Billy, for instance, who plays Yu-Gi-Oh religiously and builds Gundam models religiously and, uh, but loves bodybuilding and, and fitness. And why should he be ashamed of that? You know, why, why just because I think there's a negative association, um, when, quote unquote, nerds, geeks, whatever you want to call it, you know, there's this negative association with the jock, the, the athletic, you know, cause it's, it, it stems from a bullied past, right? You know, the ostracized, being ostracized when you're younger and being made to feel less than, you know, in Billy's case, he was a, a fat kid, you know, as he puts it and, and made fun of for that. And so he decided that he just wanted to be huge and, and he, he did something about it. And unfortunately there's a negative association with that kind of lifestyle slash body type from the nerd culture. And what I love about what Jerry is trying to do, wants to do is say, Hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with wanting to be huge and, and have big muscles and be, uh, be athletic and be, um, a physical specimen and still be a nerd and still have all these ridiculous, awesome, geeky interests. You can do both those things and you're not forsaking one for the other. Yeah. It kind of breaks the old revenge of the nerd stereotype. Like just because you're a huge Jack guy doesn't mean you're not like passionate about random nerdy things. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the, it's the absolute truth. I mean, you can be passionate and nerdy about bodybuilding, you know? Yeah. I think it starts for me, you know, having making this film, it, it really starts with having to define what a nerd is, you know, and I think that's a kind of an age old question is, and you should know, I mean, I should be candid. I don't consider myself a nerd uh, because of how I define a nerd. Um, I define a nerd as somebody who has experienced that loneliness, that level of being ostracized based on their interests, based on, you know, their, what, what they enjoy based on all of these things. And they, and they have these scars, all right? So they have a history and they have memories that they've endured. Um, and, and in spite of all of it, they, they've held on to their interests, their hobbies, their beliefs, you know, um, and, and that to me is a nerd, somebody who has a history, somebody who has scars and memories. Um, and I don't think I, I, I kind of get a little put off when people just go, yeah, I'm a nerd, you know, and, and maybe they are, but I do think that's something that is earned, um, rather than you can just call yourself that thing. And I, and I think it has a lot more to do with your your past and 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 how, what you've been made to feel and 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 what you've overcome i think that has a lot more to do with with a nerd than just your particular hobbies or interests so um and that's the way these characters are that's the way jerry is you know he's a socially awkward dude that that had to endure a lot in high school um and he has stayed true to himself uh, despite it all, you know, Billy, this guy that was bullied based on his appearance, um, and stayed true to himself in spite of it all. And Jonathan is, is as much of a nerd as the rest of them. You know, a guy that was also bullied in middle school and made to feel less than, um, did not have many friends going through high school, um, but has sort of found himself, uh, in this culture, in this, in this, uh, you know, found his place. And, and he celebrates that and he's found his confidence in that. And um, that's why I like this film. That's why I like this story is because I think it would have been easy to uh, just find any old bodybuilder or, you know, fitness person and say, hey, 
you know, you're, I'm going to make you go through this and then we'll call you a nerd at the end of it. Well, that's not the case here. I mean, these are genuine, by my definition, genuine nerds who have overcome and, and are still trying to overcome. So, yeah, I really like that definition because you definitely, you see it at conventions where like people, especially like with cosplay and kind of just everyone where people get to these conventions and it's like, finally, a place where you're not judged, you're not put down for for all these things that you love. So true. I I can remember my fir- the first time I went to Dragon Con. Um, you know, I was probably early twenties, uh, and I just remember getting there. And the the thing that struck me the most was how non judgmental it felt. And I always laugh. I say the only thing you're going to be judged on is based on the accuracy of your costume. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> some people can get pretty critical. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but other than that, I mean, it felt so free and it felt so fun and it and it just felt like everyone belonged. And I just loved it so much for that reason more than anything. You know, more more than the the pop culture aspect of it. I just loved the fact that you know, matter your shape, color, creed, you, it seemed like nobody cared, you know, and, and everyone was, was friends and friendly. So I, I just, I, I like to celebrate it. I like to celebrate that culture and that community. Yeah. It seems like Dragon Con is one of the best where like I've been to the, the big conventions where it's more about, you know, the pop culture and the, the news announcements and stuff where Dragon Con seems like it's, it's a lot more about the community. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I, I, and I'll confess, you know, once again, it's like, I'm not the biggest, I'm not familiar with all the cons as much as, as, as a, as a proper nerd is or <laughs> geek or whatever we want to say. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do. I, I love them and I love, I love what they do for people. Um, and I think, I think they should be celebrated for that reason. Yeah. So you went in a, a semi, kind of newbie to the whole culture what was the experience like actually filmmaking it um i wouldn't say at at this point you know my brother and i have a twin brother and you know we have a production company um and we've been making films for years and years um really since we got out of college um so i i've been i i've always say i uh, my closest friends are nerds and i've always been around it you know once again that's based on my definition of it um I've always had nerdy interests, believe me, you know, mainly around sci-fi. I read a lot of sci-fi. Uh, I lo- obviously love movies. Um, uh, used to collect comics. <laughs> I used to collect, my brother and I would collect comics and comic cards like crazy based on the, the visuals. We just loved the pictures and the colors. And um, we've always been very artistic in that capacity, always just very visually oriented and, even when you watch the film uh, and you watch the trailer, we want you to get that that color palette out of it, that comic-y feel out of it, um, because that's we've always resonated and, and gravitated towards that. So I wouldn't say that I've, I I'm a novice to the uh, to the culture um, just because I've been around it for a long time, done a, done a lot of things in, in that area, whether it's short films. But I felt like this was an opportunity to really explore um, the heart of it. I, I feel I felt like it was a, it was an opportunity to explore kind of what I was talking about before is like what makes you a nerd and what what is that true definition and then what does it take to rise above uh, your your past your current circumstances to become something greater than what you thought you could be um, and that's really what this story is about uh, the cosplay and the bodybuilding is just a backdrop for what it means to become something more you know in the positive sense um, to to have a dream and to 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 go after it uh, and that, and that's that's the case for Jerry Jerry has this dream and it, and make no mistake it is a legitimate real dream um, but he has problems he he's not very good with logistics you know he's <laughs> He's got to plan this event, and he's not a good event planner. <laughs> so, you know, he's got to get people there. Uh, Dragon Con said you got to get people there. We're never going to do this again. So that's a lot at stake for him. Uh, you know, the original time slot was during the Dragon Con parade, which is is a big deal where most people don't go to panels. 
during the parade. It's, it's, you're not going to get a good turnout uh, because everyone's at the parade or sleeping in. So he has these obstacles and these challenges he has to overcome in order to see this dream have a chance at having a legacy, having a chance at having a lifetime past this one moment. So I liked, I love to be able to explore that and to see the, the, the push and the pull of, of what it takes for him to try to get people to show up to this thing. Um, I think that's an interesting story. He's got a, a clear goal and there's a lots of interesting obstacles in his way, including himself, um, which is a story of a lot of us, to be honest. Um, and then you got these other characters that, that just have a clear goal to win this thing, but more existentially, more, more spiritually, they, Billy especially has his goal to just do it, to just get on that stage. Uh, you're talking about somebody who's terrified of crowds, who's extremely introverted, who's, who's never done anything like this before. Uh, being asked to stand on a stage in front of a crowd of strangers, uh, to a lot of people, that's death. You know, that they'd rather die than do that. Um, and so he has this immense obstacle in his way, which is his own fear and his self. And then all the while you have Jonathan, who's this big personality kind of jeering in his ear the whole time, <laughs> taunting him to a degree. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know. I went on a tangent there. What were, what was the question? <laughs> um, I, I forgot the question. But... Oh yeah, was I a novice in the nerd community? I don't, yeah, I don't know how that related. Yeah, for the novice remark. <laughs> no, don't yeah, apologize. Yeah. It's fine. It's understandable. Uh, in many ways, I am. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it seems like um, the fact that it was limited to two competitors was a really good thing for the for the film because it it really made it focused and those those themes that you were talking about really come through at least in the trailer. Yes, uh, I, it was a blessing in disguise uh, because uh, we could focus on their stories and these particular characters. Um, we are planning to do this again, and, you know, and we're as we edit this current film, which we're in the post production process on, we've got we're already thinking about the next thing, and we're fingers crossed, hoping that Dragon Con will let Jerry open up the the competition so we've we have like a form on our website quest of the muscle nerd.com where people can put a, a, fill it out if they're interested in competing and we've seen a fair amount of interest so far uh, from men and women which is something i'm very excited about uh, to see some women enter this competition um i think that's a dynamic that uh, we would love to explore and, and we didn't get to explore a whole lot in the first film because we're just focused on these characters, but to to potentially follow some new characters, um, I think is exciting and and you know fun to explore. So, yeah, for the first time around, I think it was good that we were only had to focus on two main guys. Yeah, and I I want to ask how it went, but I don't want to ruin the the uh, film. So, um, can you talk a little bit about just the like how it went filming yeah event. yeah sure that's, that's a whole challenge you have no idea um <laughs> uh you know it, it, in terms of how it went uh, we're you know we're not keeping i mean you could probably explore our instagram and figure out how it went um the and which i'm not bothered by you know you can watch any historical documentary and get you know i was watching a documentary the other day about uh, a weightlifting competition um it was called Born Strong, and it was about World's Strongest Man, and it happened two years ago. And I could have easily Googled who won this thing, but I was so wrapped up in the characters and the story that I didn't want to ruin it for myself. Um, and even if I knew what happened, it wouldn't have necessarily ruined the movie for me. It just might have broken the tension of the end. So anyways, uh, to find out what happens, not a big deal. The logistics of filming, we probably should have had a documentary about that as well. Um, you know, Dragon Con is, uh, we filmed all three days. We filmed Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, at Dragon Con. And the first two days were kind of just following, just kind of filming Dragon Con in general. There was only two, we had two camera. Uh, I was operating a camera uh, and I had an assist. Uh, and then my brother was operating a camera and he had an assist. And we sort of split up starting at 9 a.m. and just. I tracked around with Jonathan uh, for most of the day. Uh, he just went and filmed some random things. 
uh, I would split off and I went and filmed the judges for a while. Uh, it was a long day, like to, about probably about 10 hours on my feet, just filming constantly. Uh, and the thing about if making documentaries and, and filming is that, you know, when you do a narrative form, you kind of have a script and you, you know what you need to get. And, and, and documentary, you're sort of looking for the story as you go. You know, you're trying to find the conflict as you go. So you kind of you got to be a well versed storyteller, as well as a, a, you got to be technically proficient in what you're doing. So it's a it's kind of this like juggling all these things. Um, and so you know, just as an aside, any advice I would give to somebody who's trying to get become a documentary filmmaker, uh, it, it, the story principles are all the same across all storytelling. Whether it's writing a novel, making a documentary, writing a movie script, you know, making a video game, the story principles never change. So if you want to be good at any of those, just study story. Uh, the technical things you can learn uh, depending on what medium it's in, but just make sure you get really good at storytelling. Um, so anyways, we're having to pay attention to all these things. And so it gets daunting when you're filming because you're trying to find the conflict within, because it's not interesting without conflict. If your character doesn't have to overcome anything, then this it's not very interesting. They just, it's just like you're filming a day in the life of. So you're trying to find uh, the interesting angle from everything. So you know, Thursday and Friday was just a lot of following them around with one or two cameras uh, as they just go throughout the convention. Um, so we got to capture a lot of that. So the competition itself was on Saturday. So we, we, we started really early with each competitor and, and Jerry. So all three. So we had three different camera teams um, following them around as they sort of woke up and, and prepared for the competition. Um, and then they followed them. They all converge in, into the backstage of, of the, the panel of when it's time to do it. And um, at that point, we had a, a, I had a, we probably had a crew of about 13 there, uh, 13 uh, uh, on our team. And, you know, it's pro we had about seven or eight cameras going at any given time on the, on the competition itself. We each competitor had a camera on them backstage uh, and we filmed everything, man. And it, you know, logistically it can get, a, it can get to be a mess because you've got all these different, all this media coming from each different camera that you've got to organize. Uh, and then along with that, you, we had an audio guy who had every, all the main competitors mic. So we got to make sure we get his, his audio married in. So it was no small feat to get, to get the competition well covered uh, the way that we wanted to, you know, and, and because it's Dragon Con and it's, and it's this, they've never done this before. You know, you're, you're dealing with a lot of obstacles in your way that you weren't quite prepared for, whether it be the lighting, you know, whether it be the microphones, whatever it is. So having to kind of, you know, put out some fires as we go, there's a lot of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm super pleased with the footage that we got. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to uh, tell the story that we want we wanted to tell um, in an honest way, which was important as well. Uh, we didn't want it to turn into just a reality TV show like a where we're just force feeding everything. Uh, so I'm really proud of how honest I think it is uh, at the end of the day. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, it seemed you touched on a, a little bit how you're kind of coordinating with the, the Dragon Con team. Um, were there any specific challenges, whether with that or with just the, the crowds of filming at a convention? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, you know, logistically speaking, the, the biggest worry was not so much Dragon Con as it was the hotel, right? So you're dealing with Dragon Con staff but then you're dealing with hotel staff as well. So one of the issues we ran into is location scouting. And you know, for those who don't know what that is, is when you go to a location beforehand and you kind of you scout it out. You want to see where your cameras are going to go, where you're where you're going to stage your equipment. Uh, they would the hotel was very difficult in dealing with that. So we we did not have the amount of prep time 
that we wanted to have. You know, once Dragon Con took over the hotel, we had a little bit more freedom. It's kind of a they, since they're in kind of control of everything. Uh, the cameras aren't a big deal. Uh, we had press passes uh, that we had gotten that kind of say these guys have access; uh, they can film. Um, so it was a little easier once the convention started itself. But you know, when you're in the in the heat of the day at at a, at a big convention like Dragon Con or a Comic Con, you know, there's thousands of people in in going back and forth, and so you're trying to follow these people, and you have these massive bodies costumes everywhere pressing up against you you know you've got thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment you're trying to keep track of and so it's just a natural ballet of, of trying to make sure you're capturing what you want to and you're not getting run over at the same time um but other than that like working with dragon Con was great i mean they they're they're pretty hands-off as far as making everything happen just as long as you stay in the lanes that they've they've established they were they were a lot of fun to work with and 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 pretty easy to work with mainly because they they just were pretty hands off and they let us tell the story and do what we wanted to do but you know i think that has a lot to do with we were trying to tell a story that honors nerd culture and not and, and doesn't mock nerd culture and that that is a very we were we've been very conscious of that the entire time. It would be easy to make a film. It would be easy to turn even this documentary into a film that mocks these people that says, "Look how silly these people are." Um, and and we've tried to be very cognizant of that. And and Dragon Con is very sensitive to that. You know, they get a lot of requests from outside press and you know journalists to that they turn down because it becomes obvious that these people just want to come in and, and film the weirdos and, and then make a buck off of it. And, and so we have to be since we had to, we still are sensitive to that. Even as we edit this film, even as we edited the trailer, we did a, we, we did extensive amount of surveying uh, to make sure that this is not coming across mean spirited. Uh, and so we feel like we've done a good job so far and we we continue to be very sensitive to that. So, uh, but Dragon Con is very sensitive to that stuff as they should be. Yeah. And it seems like in the trailer you, you struck the right tone and that probably, um, eased their concerns for, for next year. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, we hope so. Uh, we're still, we're still working through that right now. It's a slow pro. I mean, Dragon Con's huge and, and it's all volunteer. I don't think people realize that it is the thing that makes Dragon Con so awesome, in my opinion, is whereas in Comic Con, it's largely uh, corporate driven, right? So Dragon Con is like non corporate, all volunteer, fan driven. So it has this like handmade style to it. You know, not everything's going to be perfect and not, you're not going to have all the things that you need, but it still maintains a sense of authenticity. Uh, that I think is hard to find in a lot of the bigger conventions. So, you know, with that comes a lot of red tape, a lot of, you know, communication you got to work through. Uh, it, sometimes it's hard to tell who's in charge uh, because it's volunteer and, and it, the hierarchy is not necessarily well defined. So we're, we're still working through that right now. And I'm confident that we'll get it to a place where we want to be. Uh, truth be told, if, um, if if for whatever reason we couldn't get it to work out with Dragon Con, we're still going to figure out a way to do the event just outside of the Dragon Con doors, you know, so to, metaphorically speaking, um, because we feel passionate about it at this point. Um, and Jerry's very passionate about making it happen again. So one way or the other, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely room for outside events that stuff like that mm -hmm. um so yeah in terms of the 2018 planning where are you with um uh, have you started planning the 2018 documentary or we we, we have yes and no <laughs> we're so knee deep in editing uh the current documentary that we just have a rough idea of of when we'll start filming again the idea is that we'll start filming again around april uh you know, hopefully we can get the logistics lined up for the actual event 
um, soon, sooner than later. And then that will dictate how we approach filming. You know, if we, we might want to follow a different set of competitors leading up to it. Um, so we've got to kind of figure that out as the event falls into place. Jerry, the, the, the judges and the, are coming into town in April, the ones from last year, and they're going to do some body casting and stuff like that. So we're definitely going to film that because I'm sure it's going to be a riot. Um, <laughs> they've never done that before. So <laughs> should be, should be fascinating. Um, so, you know, we're always trying to stay tuned to that kind of stuff. Like Jerry will always say, Hey, we're doing this. You want to film it? And I'm like, hell yeah, I want to film it. <laughs> I'll now grab my camera and, and go film it. Um, and that's how this last documentary started. You know, Jerry was just standing in my living room and we were just hanging out and he's like, Oh, you know, by the way, I'm doing this. And I was like, well, when, when did you start? He's like, Oh, I got a phone call tomorrow at dragon con. I'm like, Holy shit. So sorry. I don't know if I, <laughs> I'm like, Holy shit. And so my brother and I just grabbed the cameras and we're like, I got to film that phone call without even like much planning at all. Um, and we just, I just knew this idea was lightning and it just had to be captured. Um, I just felt it in my gut and, and we just went for it. We didn't, you know, ask for, for permission from anybody. We just greenlit ourselves as so to speak. Um, and, and we just started, we went for it and, and sort of went along with it wherever it went at that point. And, and, and that's, you know, how it turned into this and this competitor comes in it's like, Oh, well, we got to film that. And, you know, da, 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 da. And, you know, that was an eight month process and uh, we filmed a lot, a lot of footage. We filmed a lot of footage we're never going to use, mm -hmm. um, which is just the way it goes. But, uh, you know, and that I would, that would be my advice to anybody, you know, that has an idea and they feel it in their gut and it's just, just go for it on the smallest level and just, you know, if you have an idea and you believe in it and then I would say just, 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 just kind of step out on a limb and go for it to some degree. <laughs> and then, you know, if it doesn't work fine, but at least you, you took the risk. So I don't know. Yeah, the, the editing process has to be intensive if you're spending a year basically filming everything and then finding the story afterwards. Oh, man, I tell you, uh, when we finished filming this thing, I, I made a commitment. I believed in the footage that we had captured and the story of it so much. I made a commitment that I wanted to do it right uh, and do the editing right. So I studied a lot of documentary filmmaking at that point afterwards and just, uh, you know, took some courses um, and a huge por portion of having to do this right means that we have to transcribe all of the footage. And, and for those that don't know, transcription is when you literally write down every word said and you have like this big script of all the footage that you took. And so we have, you know, I don't even know how many scenes, 60 or 70 scenes and they average anywhere from half hour to three hours long. And so, you know, there's anywhere from 70 to 100 hours of footage that need to be transcribed. The reason you do that is you, you, you transcribe first and then you edit down from the transcripts. Uh, and then you get your story out of that. And then off of that, you make your rough edit, what we call the rough edit. The rough edit could be anywhere from three to five hours long. Uh, from your rough edit, you make a fine edit. The fine edit is, uh, is more close to what you'll see in the eventually in the, in the, the final film. Um, but after you get the fine edit, you got to go in and, and fix all your audio and your coloring, uh, and your music and your graphics and your animation, if you're going to do any of that. Uh, so it's an extensive, extensive process to do it right. It's extensive. You know, we could shoot from the hip and just start editing. The problem with that is, is you never know what you missed. Um, I even going through the footage now, I would, there's moments that I forgot that I filmed uh, and I'm like, Oh man, I, that's awesome. Whatever that character said there is awesome or what they did there. The look they gave is awesome and, and perfect for the story that we're trying to tell. And if, if you're not diligent about going through that footage, then you'll miss those things and, and the final product will not be as good as it could have been. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work, but hopefully, uh, 
I mean, it sounds like it's going it to pay off really well and come out to be a cool, cool documentary. I hope so. We're dedicated to it. And yeah, it seems like, um, you know, with the trailer out, you guys have been kind of ramping up the, the promotion of it. What's the what's it been like getting the word out about it? And what have you seen success with? Yeah, uh, um, the uh, kind of our, our impetus behind that was we're, we're right now we're trying to find some strategic partners, whether that be um, an executive partner that can help pay for some of the things that we need to do. Uh, whether it be a, a sponsorship type partner, uh, just s- strategic partners that can help us get the film across the finish line. So we wanted to get something out there that was like, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, come on board if you're interested. You know, kind of like what we're doing right now. You know, just getting the word out a little bit, uh, sharing the story of this film and 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 the pro- where we're at in the process. Um, the feedback from the general fans has been awesome. I mean, nothing short of just very heartwarming and excited. Uh, and just some of the quotes that we read on like the Facebook video and stuff is, it's just been, it's been very encouraging. You know, it, the, the, it's, it, the trailers, the, the trailer, I call it the trailers. We don't even have the film edited yet, so it's not the real trailer, but, uh, sort of the preliminary teaser trailer, um, has had the that has had the effect that we hoped it would, and I think that's affirming for us as we move forward. Uh, we, you know, we wanted to make sure that this was, like I said, honoring to this culture um, and not not, not degrading uh, or mocking. And I and I, I really feel like the feedback we've gotten has has affirmed that it, that it's been positive. Um, and also, we wanted people to know that we're doing it again, and that there's an opportunity to be a part of the next one. Um, and, and that wherever they're at in this country or across the world, that if they need that little bit of motivation, that carrot to get off the couch or, you know, pursue this thing that they've always kind of had an aching to do, that this is, maybe this can be that carrot that they, they chase, that, that gets them to the next stage to that, that opportunity, that hope at an award or being honored for your efforts, uh, and we've had, seen a good response um, based on that too. I mean, there's bodybuilding, physique-oriented, cosplaying nerds all over. I mean, they're they are they are out there big time, and and even some of them are just starting their journey. You know, some of them are not. You know, not everybody's this giant ripped monster. Maybe they're just starting the journey of wanting to just lose weight and get healthy, and to have this reason to do it you know this this thing that says and we're, we're going to do amateur and professional so that you know people that are just starting their journey don't have to stand next to jonathan or billy and say oh yeah, this is pointless that they can be celebrated uh for where they're at in their journey and then we'll have the professional for the people that have been working at this for years and years and years and and care about what they're doing and it's almost a profession for them uh, that they could have an opportunity to really be celebrated properly for not just their bodies, but their passion for costuming. You know, the, the, the countless hours they put into making their costumes or the money they put into their costumes, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think that, so that's why we put the trailer out there. We wanted to just start to get the pot stirred a little bit, to start to get the conversation started. Uh, you know, we're not looking for really anything at this point, except for potentially uh, some a partner, a business partner, somebody that can come on board and you know help us finish this thing. You know, we financed it completely out of our own pockets. Uh, you know, it wasn't. Um, you know, we had to make a lot of sacrifices to make it happen, and we haven't certainly haven't made any money. <laughs> um, spent a lot of money, but haven't made any money yet. Um, so you know we had toyed with doing a Kickstarter at some point and that still might be a potential, but we've done that in the past for certain things. And they always oftentimes end up being more work than, than they're worth. Uh, and we didn't want their strings to be attached. Like, Oh, you know, we want to celebrate you, but give us 25 bucks. Like the, and not that there's anything, if people feel like they want to do that, fine. Not, there's not, I'm not saying, telling people not to do that if, if that's their only recourse. But 
for us right now, it, we wanted it to be a no strings attached, you know, just join us for the ride, uh, follow along, you know, stay tuned. And then maybe down the line, we might ask you for some help if we need it, but we're going to, we're going to try to do this on our own the best that we can. So, so, so we don't have to burden anybody. Um, but, but we're prepared to, if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like you said, motivating people. It's definitely, it's definitely motivated me to step up my training for the con season. And Good. It's definitely. It, it seems like it'll motivate other filmmakers, um, you know, in this community and kind of trying to around cons. Um, yeah, man, I hope so. There's so many stories in this community. There's so many, and and it has. It starts with character, right? Like the best stories start with interesting characters. And interesting characters are just inherent in the, this nerd culture. This, and it's because they've had to overcome. And they have interesting obstacles, interesting interests, you know, interesting goals. And I just, I'm fascinated by it. I love it. And I know there's so many storytellers out there that live within this community. And they, and they probably have become so used to seeing it that they don't realize how interesting it is to the rest of the world. So, you know, whether it's filmmaking or writing or, you know, making video games or whatever it is, I, you know, I would just say, look around you, man. There's, <laughs> you might be married to, you might be a sibling of, you might have a best friend that is, is the subject of your next big story. Yeah. Do you have one piece of advice for someone trying to, trying to film that story? <laughs> Uh, just start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I, I've been thinking about this question. One piece of advice. I mean, there's a lot of cliches. I, I do think start is definitely one of them. Um, to just grab the camera and go, uh, no matter where you're at in your own, whether you've ever filmed anything or not. I think uh, I always tell people just to do, 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 uh, and. You know, you can read as many books as you want on it, which I think is important aspect of educate is always educating yourself. But there is no, no substitute for action for doing. Uh, you know, I could have overplanned this documentary until I was blue in the face, and it would pass. The opportunity would have passed me by. Um, now I'm not saying don't plan. You know, <laughs> planning is good. Planning helps you big time. Uh, I, I'm just saying. You know, just just start, just start doing stuff, and you and you don't have to go for the gold every time. You know, it doesn't have to be a feature length film. Um, you know, it might be something as simple as uh, st the best stories start with uh, uh, an an intent, a goal, and and obstacles to that intent. So a story might be as simple as you know, uh, my husband is going for an interview. Uh, will he get the job? Uh, you know, he woke up late. Uh, he's he's dyslexic. He's never done anything like this before. Uh, he's not good talking to people. Let's follow along and see what happens. You know, that there's a story in that, and it could be five minutes long. You know, it could be ten minutes long. Uh, I would just, you know, don't always think it. Ha you have to go and and make the this big feature length film spanning over months and months of time start with something that occurs over one day and then see if you can edit it into something interesting and then once you can do that try something a little bit longer you know so i don't know <laughs> hope that helps somebody <laughs> yeah definitely um yeah matthew this has been awesome um so where can people learn more about the project and when can they look forward to seeing the film sure sure uh quest of the muscle nerd .com. just sign up for our email list we'll try to send out updates as they come if you're interested in competing no matter where you're at in your journey fill out the form uh, it's not you're not obligated it's just so we can kind of get a sense of who's interested and where they're at in their journey. There's a little spot for you to, to fill that in. Um, and hopefully we can see this film. Our goal is to finish it by fall of this year. That's what we're shooting for. Um, where it will end up after that, who knows? Uh, we're going to try to go the festival route a little bit. Um, and then hopefully uh, a streaming service or somebody like that will pick it up so that everybody can see it 
everywhere. But if you sign up for our email list, we'll keep you posted uh, as to where this film's at and where the next film's going to be at. So that's the best I can give. <laughs> All right, yeah, Matthew, uh, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it, Tim, anytime, any place, as long as it's in my office. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, you be good. I'll see you. There you have it, guys, my talk with Matthew from Quest of the Muscle Nerd. Um, I'm really excited about seeing the full film. I think it's going to be really cool. And I thought he had some awesome advice for filmmakers and really for any any creators and entrepreneurs um, in the space. One of the things that he, that he said near the end, really, was he talked about how many powerful stories are in the the nerd community and surrounding comic cons specifically um and that you know some people in the community may not really recognize what a what a strong opportunity so whether it's you know authors filmmakers video game creators um it does really present a great opportunity for creators to to tell these stories and i think that was something that he hopes happens is is more stories come out of this. Uh, in episode 22, I talked to uh, Dan Nastro, the the director of Convention, which is a, a short film, uh, a scripted short film that sets that is set at New York Comic Con, which is another great example of, you know, how many great stories there are to tell. And um, yeah, I would definitely check that that episode as well, specifically for filmmakers. And yeah, the other great tip that seemed to be um, specifically for documentary filmmakers is how he talked about, um, you know, on the day they had seven cameras uh, throughout the, the week of Dragon Con. They had, I think, two cameras going around following the, the competitors and um, everything going on. And then over the eight month period, they would just stop by Jerry's house when something was going on and film that and just film as much as possible and then afterwards get it all together organize it so you can you can find this story that that um, you're trying to tell and how even a documentary should have that clear you know beginning middle and end and the the clear conflict and personal growth between the 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 main characters um, so that was that was a really great tips for documentary filmmakers um, so yeah definitely follow quest of the muscle nerd um, you can head to questofthemusclenerd.com, uh, follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Quest of the Muscle Nerd, and yeah, check out the trailer. If you're interested in competing, they've got a sign-up form on their website, or partnering, or just learning more about the the competition and the documentary. Definitely check all of that out, and I'll include links to all of that in the show notes at underthecapes.com slash episode 31 and i'm doing a giveaway for a black panther and a thor ragnarok poster and um, this is a good step for me in my entrepreneur journey because it is the first time i've ever done this um, so i've never done a a giveaway of any kind um, so it's something that i'm learning and uh, <laughs> uh, kind of figuring out as i go <laughs> So the drawing will be uh, Monday at 5 p.m. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this next week and exactly, you know, what I learned from the, from the giveaway. And I hope to do more giveaways in the future because um, already it's been a cool experience and I've collected things over the years that uh, I hope will make for good giveaways and... Uh, yeah, it's it's been cool so far. So I'll talk more about that next week. And and yeah, I thanks so much for listening this week, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. The other awesome thing that has been happening this week is uh, so this will be the second episode that goes up on YouTube. The first episode has been performing really well. Um, the late to the party episode and and it's mainly due to the fact that they have been really great about sharing it on their videos um, and I think you know the other takeaway from that is what we what I 
they talked about last week with me um, is because that is the channel that their followers are on. I think it performed a lot, a lot better than it could have if, you know, even if I had just posted just the, just the episode on as a podcast. I think that I mean they they would have been willing to share it out and uh, you know tell their followers about it. But I think it performed better because they you know they were on YouTube telling their followers about another YouTube video to watch rather than a podcast episode which would have been you know a different channel so definitely finding people on the channel that they most prefer and building the platform that way so i think uh i'm i'm really happy with how that this is working out so far and as i said i'll i'll continue to improve the the youtube aspect of things as we go forward and yeah guys Thanks thanks so much for listening. I hope you got something out of this and I will see you next week. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening to the Under the Capes podcast. I hope this has motivated you to either start or help grow your geek business. If you like the show, I'd love if you could give us a rating or review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you happen to be listening from. And feel free to connect on social media on Twitter at Under the Capes. Facebook at Under the Capes and on Instagram at Under the Capes Podcast. Thanks so much and have a great day.